untrustworthy, untruthful, unprincipled, unreliable, and underwater. The wake surfing industry would have you believe that engaging in wake sports in water as shallow as 10 feet constitutes responsible boating. Why is this issue important? Because even large lakes can have expanses of shallow water that are inappropriate for wake sports. These waters constitute a critical component of lake and river ecosystems and are essential for healthy populations of aquatic organisms, including sport fish and the food chains that support them. Some lakes have no deep areas, and many lakes have limited areas that are deep or areas that are irregularly shaped. Unfortunately, the wake surfing industry selfishly values its profits over protection of public resources. To sustain its deceptive claim that wake sports can be done responsibly 200 feet from shorelines and in water less than 20 feet deep, the wake surfing industry relies upon two studies. The first study was funded by the Water Sports Industry Association, also known as the WSIA. This study, conducted in 2015, focused on surface wakes, but, during the course of fieldwork, found that a boat wake surfing in 10 feet of water generates 35% more wave energy than the same boat wake surfing in 22 feet of water. The authors of the study explained that the likely reason was that wake surfing in shallow water requires the boat to operate with higher engine revolutions and thus puts more energy into the water. Although this observation strongly suggests that the energy from the boat was forcefully interacting with the lake bottom, the report is silent about the adverse effects that wake surfing might have on lake and river bottoms. In 2021, the WSIA let it be known on social media that it possessed a computer simulation that indicated that the propeller wash from a wake surfing boat did not extend deeper than eight feet. However, the WSIA acknowledged that computer simulations are never as good as real world studies and that it had budgeted for a field study to be conducted later that year. The purpose of the field study was to provide factual data to evaluate the effects of wake surfing at different depths. The computer simulation was apparently the one funded by the National Marine Manufacturers Association and which was released in March 2022 in a journal published by a disreputable publisher in China. The study has been criticized for its many flaws, including failure to report underwater velocities at ranges associated with sediment disruption, lack of validation with field data, and making conclusions that were not supported by the material presented. Furthermore, the computer model limited its consideration to prop wash and did not examine the other mechanisms that caused boats to disrupt bottom sediments. And whatever happened to the field study that the WSIA had budgeted for in 2021? It has never seen the light of day. Is this because factual data demonstrated that wake surfing causes damage to the lake and river bottoms at depths greater than 10 feet? Research independent of the wake surfing industry suggests that this could be the reason. The most comprehensive study regarding the effects of wake surfing on lake bottoms is the St. Anthony Falls Laboratory Phase II study, which was released in July 2025. This study was a multi-year research effort to characterize the hydrodynamic phenomena that occur beneath power boats under various operating conditions. The study evaluated two models of deck boats three models of bow riders, and two models of wake boats. The University of Minnesota researchers identified three distinct ways power boats affect lake bottoms. First, the bow and stern pressure waves emanating downward from the hull initiate dislodgement of bottom sediments. Next, the prop wash from the propeller and then the transverse waves from the hull act as separate forces to sweep the dislodged sediment into the water column. The researchers collected video documenting what happens to lake bottoms when different kinds of boats pass over them. This is what a typical bow rider looks like when planing 9 feet above a lake bottom. You can see how the bow and stern pressure waves impact the lake bed, but notice that transverse waves and prop wash from the bow rider do not penetrate this deep. At 14 feet, even the effect of the bow and stern waves is barely noticeable. One of the wake boats tested in the study 
is a more recent model of the kind of wake boat used in the WSIA study conducted in 2015. In nine feet of water, the bow and stern waves from the boat dislodge the sediment. The transverse waves and prop wash then drive the sediment and uprooted vegetation up into the water column. It's not much better when the boat passes 14 feet over the lake bottom. During the course of this study, the researchers collected and processed an enormous amount of velocity data in the water column. Based on these data and the videos, the researchers recommend that wake sports be limited to areas that are at least 20 feet deep or if a lake is vegetated, at least 20 feet above the tops of the vegetation. The St. Anthony Falls Laboratory study is not the only research that has established that wake sports can damage lake and river bottoms. Terra Vigilis Environmental Services investigated the effect of wake boats on lake bottoms at Lake Beulah and North Lake in Wisconsin and at Lake Waramog in Connecticut. These researchers use deep water videography to document that wake boats cause kinetic energy effects at depths as deep as 26 feet. These effects were not observed with conventional ski and cruising boats. Terra Vigilis also found large areas in these lakes where aquatic plants had been substantially eradicated. Larat Aquatic Consulting conducted a different field investigation in 2019 at Lake Kalamalka in British Columbia. This investigation found that wake surfing causes major sediment disruptions at 10 feet below the surface and significant disruptions at 13 feet. Researchers at Université Laval in Canada were the first investigators to use velocity measuring instruments to assess the effect of wake sports on lake bottoms. Their study, released in 2015, found that the older model of wake boat used in the study could disrupt bottom sediments down to 16 feet and concluded that wake sports should only take place in parts of water bodies that were at least that deep. As noted previously, later studies conducted with more powerful wake boats support restricting wake sports to greater depths. Credible research shows that wake sports in waters less than 20 feet deep come at the cost of significant damage to the aquatic habitat. This is in addition to the damage that the huge wakes from these boats cause to near-shore habitat, shorelines, and the impairment of enjoyment of affected water bodies by other users. Which begs the question, do wake surfers even care? Certainly there are people who do care. Among them are anglers, paddlers, sailors, other motorboaters, lake associations, environmental organizations, shoreline property owners, nature enthusiasts, and people who object to the senseless destruction of natural resources in general. Research independent of the wake surfing industry is important because it provides information useful to determine where wake sports should be avoided. For example, applying criteria such as a minimum depth of 20 feet, a shoreline buffer of 600 feet, and a contiguous area of 50 acres can provide a starting point for determining which bodies of water are inherently unsuitable for wake sports. Although the huge surface wakes from wake boats are their most noticeable feature, the damage these boats can cause to aquatic ecosystems should not be ignored. Our lakes and rivers are valuable. We should take better care of them.